meet Yevgeny Prigosh, a figure we have grown familiar with. He is often seen vocally criticizing, accusing the Russian general staff of ammunition shortage, donning semi-military attire and flaunting his image as a tough alpha male. But did you know that this hasn't always been his public persona? In fact, this is just one side of him. What if I showed you a side of Prigozhin as a dapper waiter like in this photo? Or even as a knowledgeable sommelier presenting wines to George W. Bush Jr.? Wouldn't it be wonderful if they were a photos of Prigozhin with Bush? I would certainly love to lay my eye on it. I'm Maria Druska, and today we will dive deep into the life of Yevgeny Prigozhin, one of the leaders of PMC Wagner, often dubbed as Putin's cook. Born on November 29, 1979, Prigozhin is a renowned Russian entrepreneur, the power behind the Russian group Concord and the founder of PMC Wagner. At 18, Prigozhin faced the law when the Kubyshev court of Leningrad sentenced him to two years probation for charges relating to theft. Two years later, a more severe judgment came down. The Zhdanovsky court of Leningrad handed him a 13-year prison sentence for a series of crimes such as theft, robbery, fraud, involving a minor in criminal activity, earning him the nickname Zhako. Prigozhin did not serve his full term. In 1988, he was sent to a settlement colony, and in 1990, when the Soviet Union was almost collapsing, he was released. And here, from somewhere, Prigozhin gets money, and almost immediately after being released in 1990, he organized a network of hot dog sales in Leningrad. With the USSR's collapse, his ventures in public catering during the chaotic 90s were very profitable, and in 1993 Prigozhin became the head of the Contrast supermarket chain. In December 1996, together with partners, he opened the first elite restaurant Old Customs House in the building of the Zoological Institute of the Russian Academy of Science in Petersburg. An investment of $350,000 was recouped in mere months, with a million dollars in earnings by year end. Such success was due to the fact that the new elites had already appeared in Russia and the opportunities to spend money were quite limited. So the opening of a fashionable restaurant at that time, of course, had extraordinary success. The same year he opened a catering direction, the company Concord Catering a venture that would remain pivotal throughout his career. Two years later, in the spring of 1998, Prigozhin opened the New Island restaurant, which became a popular place among the financial and political elite, primarily due to its foreign guests. Indeed, in the summer of 1999, it hosted a meeting between Sergei Stefanishin and IMF Managing Director Michel Kamdesu. In 2001, the Yacht New Island hosted a dinner for the presidents of Russia and France, Vladimir Putin and Jacques Chirac. In May 2002, Vladimir Putin hosted George W. Bush Jr., and in the fall of 2003, Putin celebrated his birthday on the ship. Now, circling back to the company Concord. By July 2015, the Wagner PMC already existed and was active. What could Prigozhin, as Putin's overseer, get for this? 
Let's give some numbers. From the end of 2014 to mid 2015, the structures of Concord won tenders worth 10.3 billion rubles for cleaning in barracks and educational institutions of the Ministry of Defense. The company Megaline, linked with Precaution, secured a contract for 3.3 billion rubles and since September 2015 has been building a military base in the Belgorod region. The same company won a competition for a quickly erected military town for 161.6 million rubles in the village of Svetle, in the Omsk region. In the fall of 2015, a number of companies believed to be associated with Concord won tenders announced by a subsidiary of the Ministry of Defense. Per their contracts, companies were mandated to manage housing and utility services valued at 26 billion rubles in military towns across the Moscow, Bryansk and Tver regions. Overall, in 2015, all companies associated with Yevgeny Prigozhin, according to RBC estimates, received Defense Ministry contracts for catering, cleaning and construction services wars 68.6 billion rubles. To put that into perspective for 2015, that's over 1 billion US dollars. And a significant portion of this money ends up in the pocket of Yevgeny Prigozhin. And this only covers portions of 2014 and 2015. Here is another fact. In 2017, five companies affiliated with Prigozhin and Concord won contracts to organize meals for children in Moscow schools for the period up to 2019. Of the total amount of about 50 billion rubles, these companies account for 94% of the contract value. As you can understand yourself, since Prigozhin entered the upper league of Russia's leadership, there were no problems with state orders in his companies. Considering Prigozhin's business success, one should not overlook his children. Before the large-scale invasion of Russian troops into Ukraine, Yevgeny Prigozhin's children led a luxury life in EU countries, even though their father, the boss of a militarized formation, a former hot dog seller, having been sanctioned by the West since 2016. Prigozhin has three children, a son Pavel and daughters Polina and Veronika. Pavel owns five companies that previously belonged to his mother Lyubov Prigozhina. LLC Beta, Tour Status, LLC Lachta Park Premium, LLC Lachta Park and LLC Lachta Plaza. Shares of various companies periodically migrate from one child of Prigozhin to another obviously this is done to evade taxes or obtain tax benefits. But Prigozhin is a multi-faced personality who has interests in various industries, not only in delicious food and mercenaries, but also in the media. Prigozhin was associated with the activities of the newspaper about newspapers, whose employees in 2012-2013 were engaged in cleaning the market from lies and promoting the exposure of lying and corrupt media. This was done through attempts to introduce their employees to independent publications and subsequent filling of lawsuits against them for publishing non-existing interviews that were previously placed on an advertising basis. An episode targeting Forbes even made its way to the NTV show Emergency Event. Furthermore, personnel from Prigozhin's enterprises catered for and secured a string of protests in 1220, collecting intel on forthcoming actions and the leaders at their helm. They also complied materials for the documentary Anatomy of a Protest. Prigozhin is one of the organizers and financiers of the critical documentary about the political opposition anatomy of a protest and the troll factory, which is associated with his company Glovset. 
In September 2013, it became known about the existence in St. Petersburg Internet Research Agency, also marketed in the press and other sources as a troll factory, Prigozhin's trolls, Olgina trolls, Kremlin bots the employees of which were engaged in posting posts and comments of a pro-government and anti-opposition nature on the internet and social networks. In May 2014, the hacker group Anonymous International published data according to which financing was carried out by the structures of Evgeny Prikoshin. They confirmed that the key task of the employees are writing and posting pro-government posts and comments on various sites and forums, as well as discrediting opposition figures. According to a former employee, the agency worked around the o'clock with shifts of 12 hours and an employee's earnings amounted to 40,000 rubles per month. If you're enjoying this so far, guys, please don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And if you want to support the production channel and help us grow, you can do so through my Patreon or buy me a coffee, which I have shared in the description below. The U.S. Department of Justice has accused the agency of interfering in American political life, including the 2014 onward U.S. presidential elections. Allegedly, agency employees regularly visiting the U.S. published false information on social networks, placed political advertising, organized street actions, and contracted members of Donald Trump's election headquarters. According to an investigation by RBC magazine in June 2017, Prigozhin is potentially the mastermind and financer of one of Russia's largest pro-government media holdings, which adheres to a loyal position towards the authorities. In May June 2014, the federal news agencies emerged later expanding into a network of 16 news websites, collectively known as the Media Factory. The press service of the company Concord categorically denied any connection of Prigozhin with these online publications. By February 2017, the monthly audience of the publications reached 36 million people outperforming prominent sources like RIA News and Komsomolska Pravda. At that time, the Mediologia monitoring system ranked the Federal News Agency, or FAN, seventh in terms of citation among Russian media. The total number of employees is estimated at 225-250 people. In the spring of 2019, a common department appeared inside the fan. Those whose employees leave comments under media publications on social networks. On October 4, 2019, Open Media reported on the creation of the media holding Patriot, which included part of the publications of the Media Factory, Federal News Agency, People's News, Economy Today, and Politics Today. In 2018, the total revenue of all four publications amounted to about 300 million rubles, the supervisory board of which was headed by Prigozhin. The media holdings addresses is located in the residential complex of the business class Lakta Plaza, developed by its company Concord Management and Consulting. The purpose of the creating the holding is stated as maximum dissemination of information about events happening in Russia to create a favorable information space aimed at the development of the country and opposition to those media that promote negative information and do not notice the good that is happening in the country. 
This structure was headed by the 35-year-old Stolarchuk, the head of the pro-Kremlin party Young Russia, liquidated in 2018, and a lawyer of the Fund for the Defense of National Values. The total workforce of the media holding was 400 people. From the morning of June 30, 2023, the website of Seven Media linked with the entrepreneur. Among them, Economist Today, Politics Today, Nevsky News, People's News stopped updating since the moment of the coup. The number of publications has decreased. The Patriot side ceased to be accessible. On the same day, Nevsky News, Economics Today and RIA Fan announced the cessation of work. Of course, considering Prigozhin's background, he could not have avoided sanctions. In December 2016, the US included Prigozhin in its sanctions over Russia's action in Ukraine. Commenting on this decision, Prigozhin said that he is indifferent to sanctions because his business is not related to Europe and the US and he prefers to have vacation in Russia. In June 2017, Concord Catering and Concord Management and Consulting, the managing company of the Concord Holding, which includes several restaurants and the chain of boutiques Museum of Chocolate, were included in the expanded sanctions list. In February 2018, U.S. Special Prosecutor Robert Mueller indicted Prigozhin and 12 other Russian citizens in the case of interference in the U.S. presidential elections. As a result of all the above, in February 2018, the District Court of the District of Columbia, USA, issued an arrest warrant for Prigozhin. In the summer of 2020, the FBI edited Prigozhin in the wanted list and in February 2021 it promised a reward of $250,000 for information that would help his arrest. In February 2022, Prigozhin filed a lawsuit with the Gagarinsky District Court in Moscow, as well as in the United Kingdom against the investigative group Bellingcat demanding the removal and refutation of information about the businessman's connection with the Wagner private military company. In May, in London, court dismissed Prigozhin's lawsuit. This happened after the lawyers working with him refused to continue representing him in court due to the potential harm to their reputation. On June 3, the Gagarinsky court in Moscow satisfied the lawsuit. In August, Bloomberg reported on Prigozhin's submission to the High Court in London of an emotional letter in which he questioned the independence of British courts. All this was before the appearance of a video in which Prigozhin is seen recruiting prisoners to the Wagner BMC. This is a great illustration of what Prigozhin, like any member of Vladimir Putin's entourage, is like. They do anything they want, but try to hide behind a mask of civility. But in reality, it is not so, and here is one of the cases that illustrate this well. In November 2022, a Telegram channel affiliated with the Wagner PMC published a video of the execution of prisoner Yevgeny Nushin. In the video, the man says that he was kidnapped from Kyiv and will face judgment. Then Nushin's head is smashed with a mallet. Evgeny Nuzhin was recruited into the Wagner PMC in one of the Russian prisons where he was serving a sentence and was sent to Ukraine. At the beginning of September, he surrendered to captivity. The owner of the Wagner PMC, Evgeny Prigozhin, called the murder video beautiful directorial 
work, adding that the killing was fair. The cynicism of the situation lies in the fact that later Prigozhin appealed to the Prosecutor General of the Russian Federation, Igor Krasnov, with a request to check the fact and circumstances of Nuzhin's murder, while noting in his statement that the operational center of the Wagner PMC is investigating a version of events according to which Nuzhin was recruited by the CIA and he deliberately went to prison for 27 years in order to get into the PMC and create conditions for his execution. What? Now, let's delve deeper into Prigozhin's role during the invasion. Those acquainted with the Wagner PMC dynamics will recognize that while other commanders lead on the front lines, Prigozhin operates more as a public face of Wagner. But why this structure? There is a popular theory within the security forces. Prigozhin functions as a looming threat to Russia's elite necessary for their subjugation and to maintain an atmosphere of fear. All of Prigozhin's activities were coordinated with Putin, who, knowing about the Russian elite's doubts about the necessity of a war with Ukraine, threatened them with Prigozhin, whose actions are not limited by the law. Putin needed Prigozhin's activity to keep Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu and his subordinates on their toes. In case of a hypothetical negative turn of event for the Putin regime, according to a journalist source, Prigozhin might have played the role of Putin's hammer, capable of conducting a showy pitany of the Russian elite, repressions and executions. This hypothesis wonderfully explains why Prigozhin constantly criticized Shoigu, Gerasimov, Kadyrov, and other security force members from the defense ministry and the general staff. The problem was that Prigozhin quickly gained power and began to sleep from Vladimir Putin's control, and having his media resource made Prigozhin more recognizable. Prigozhin was never indifferent to any event somewhat related to the actions in the defense ministry. This was the case during the difficult decision about retreating from the right bank, about the division of victory after capturing Solidar, about the shortage of ammunition, and so on. Intriguingly, he never publicly confronted Putin, but gradually sensing his own impunity and having the appropriate resources, Prigozhin awaited the moment for a move, and that move came. On June 11, 2023, Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu signed an order according to which all Russian volunteer units must formalize contracts with the Ministry of Defense. Journalists noted that although Shoigu did not specify whom he meant, the Russian Defense Ministry often referred to PMC fighters as volunteers. This event became the trigger for Prigozhin's rebellion, who saw direct encroachments on his power and resources. And you already know what happened next. A failed mutiny that almost reached Moscow and scared all of the leadership of the Russian Federation. Let's summarize. Yevgeny Prigozhin is a product of his era. A man who managed to live a significant part of his life in the Soviet Union, go to prison, get out of jail before the collapse of the Soviet Union, somehow find money for business, and most likely these funds were obtained illegally, forging high-level ties and then successfully monetize his connections. Prigozhin's trajectory provides insight into Putin's inner circle. If you believe that Prigozhin is the only openly odious character, 
you are deeply mistaken. And believe me, soon enough someone will try to fill this precaution's niche and will commit any crime to achieve it. See you in my next videos. Well then, my dear friends, you just watched a video that was recorded one day before the Russian air defense missiles shot down a plane carrying Yevgeny Prikoshin and top commanders of Wagner PMC, according to one version, which seems most probable. What is known at the moment, the Embraer Legacy plane was en route from Moscow to St. Petersburg. However, something unclear happened in the Tver region. Probably some combat actions, factors came into play and this plane crashed to the ground. There were 10 people on board, including three crew members. It was previously known that the Embraer Legacy with the number RA-02795 belonged to Yevgeny Prikoshin. Yevgeny Prikoshin was listed as a passenger on this flight, as confirmed by the Russian Federal Air Transport Agency. At the same time, some Russian media sources suggest that the plane of the head of Wagner was shot down by Russian air defense. Local residents heard two bars characteristic of air defense before the plane's crash. This is confirmed by also witnesses who were there and recorded video. Apart from Prigozhin, Dmitry Utkin, Prigozhin's right-hand man and responsible for all Wagner's military operations, was also on board. And you know, it's very symbolic because Utkin was accused of shooting down the Ukrainian Il-76 carrying our paratroopers. To remind you, pro-Russian separatists shot down a plane of the Ukrainian army on August 14, 2014, which was landing at Luhansk airport. 49 paratroopers and pilots died. I don't know what will come next, what conspiracy theories will develop around this situation, but I want to raise this glass, cup of coffee and make a toast. In due course, even Putin will meet his fate and wouldn't be poetic if in hell his own chef serves him a welcome drink. Here is hoping they enjoy the internal cook-off.